Section 1.5, Applications and Modeling with Quadratic Equations. Okay, first of all, I want you to recall the Pythagorean Theorem. So remember, this is about a triangle. We have two legs and a hypotenuse. The legs are always A and B, and your hypotenuse side, which is across from the right angle, is always your C value. And we know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A piece of property has the shape of a right triangle. The longer leg is 20 meters longer than twice the length of the shorter leg. The hypotenuse is 10 meters longer than the length of the longer leg. Find the lengths of the sides of the triangular lot. Let's first look at this sentence. It says the longer leg, so that's the one along the bottom of your screen, is 20 meters longer than twice the length of the shorter leg. So we're gonna go ahead and call our short leg x. Now we need to write an expression for 20 longer than twice x. That's gonna look like 2x plus 20. The next sentence we're gonna look at is the hypotenuse, so that's our side across from the right angle, is 10 meters longer than the length of the longer leg. Well, we just labeled the longer leg as 2x plus 20, so we're just gonna add 10 more onto that for our hypotenuse. So we get 2x plus 30 for the hypotenuse. Now, in order to solve for x, we're gonna use our Pythagorean theorem since this is a right triangle. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's plug our short leg in for a, our long leg for b, and plug our hypotenuse in for c. Okay, the first thing we need to do to simplify this is take care of our binomials that are squared. So you can either do that with FOIL or BOX method. Here's a quick reminder on those two if you need it. Now we need to work to simplify and solve this equation. So we're gonna go ahead and combine like terms on the left side and rewrite the rest. And then we need to get everything on the same side. So I'm gonna move the 4x squared, the 120x, and the 900 over to the left side. And now we have a quadratic equation left that we can factor. When we factor, we get x minus 50 and x plus 10, because those two numbers add to negative 40 and multiply to negative 500. When I set each of those equal to zero, I get x equals 50 and x equals negative 10. Now recall that x stands for a side length of our triangle. So x equaling a negative number like 10 in this case doesn't make sense. So we're going to cross off that answer. So in the end, whenever we plug 50 back in for all, all three of our sides, our answer for our different side lengths are 50, 120, and 130. If a projectile is launched vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 100 feet per second, neglecting air resistance, its height, s, in feet above ground, t, seconds after projection is given by this equation. I think it's important for you to know right here that s is your height above ground and t is your seconds after launch. The first part of this problem wants to know after how many seconds will it be 50 feet above ground? So we're gonna take 50 and we're gonna plug that in for s. And we're gonna solve this equation. To solve this, we're gonna use the quadratic formula. So first, we need to move 50 over to the right side by subtracting it. And then we can plug in, I'm sorry, and then we're gonna divide out a greatest common factor of two. Now we can plug in each of our a, b, and c values into the quadratic formula. Now, what we're talking about here is seconds. That's what t is equal to, it's seconds. 
And if someone asked you how long you had been running for and you told them negative 50 plus or minus square root 1700 divided by 16 seconds, they might look at you kind of weird. So we're going to write our final answer here as decimals. So first of all, write this once with a plus sign and once with a minus sign because technically it's two answers. And then plug these into your calculator and we get t equals 0 0.55 or 5.70. Okay, let's talk about whether or not two answers make sense here. So I've got a little drawing. This green thing is the path of the object that you launched. So it starts at the origin, it gets shot up into the air, and it comes back down. Our object technically hits 50 feet in the air twice. On the way up, it'll hit 50 feet at 0.55 seconds. And on the way down, it will hit 50 feet at 5.7 seconds. So in the end, both of these are our answers. Make sure that you put units on it. The next part of the question is asking how long it will take for the projectile to return to the ground. So my last drawing, that's at the end of the green path on the ground where I kind of drew an X. For this part, we're gonna plug zero in for the height because we wanna know when the height was zero when it hit the ground. This equation is a little bit easier to solve. I can just start by pulling out a GCF. The GCF I'm gonna pull out is a negative four T. And now I can use my zero factor property to set each of the parts equal to zero and solve for T. Okay, so now let's look at my picture again the item was launched at zero seconds. It went up in the air, it came back down at 6.25 seconds. So in the end, our answer is just gonna be 6.25 seconds is how long it takes for the projectile to return to the ground. The iRide trolley service carries passengers along the International Drive Resort area of Orlando, Florida. The bar graph shows iRide trolley ridership in millions. The quadratic equation models ridership from 2000 to 2010, where y represents the ridership in millions, so that's how many people are riding, and x equals 0 represents 2000. x equals 1 equ represents 2001. So x is our year, but we're not using 2000 for the year, we're using 0 or 1 or 2. For the first part of this question, we're going to use the model to determine the ridership in 2008. Compare the results to the actual ridership figure of 2.1 million. So we're plugging in a value for x since we are determining the ridership at a certain year. But remember, we're not going to plug in 2008 for x. We're going to plug in x equals 8 for 2008 because that follows our pattern. So take your equation and replace each of your x values with 8, and we get approximately 2 million. Part B, according to the model, in what year did ridership reach 1.9 million? So now we're going to take 1.9 and we're plugging that in for y, because that stands for the ridership, and x is our variable for year. So plug 1.9 in for your y value, and we're going to solve this. Start by subtracting your 1.9 over and combining it with your 1.619. Now, we're going to use the quadratic formula. It's a little messy with all these decimals, but just go very careful, make sure that you don't miss any decimal places, and plug this, simplify it by plugging parts into your calculator. In the end, you should get x equals 3.3 or 11.7. Two answers here makes sense because remember we have a quadratic. It goes up, it peaks, and then it comes back down. So there's going to be two points along this spectrum when we reach the ridership of 1.9 million.